In this video, we're going to go through some of my tips that you can use to organize your data models in Power BI. We're going to go through each one of them, how to do them, and why you should be doing them in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So as you work with Power BI reports, you tend to create more measures, tables, or columns that eventually it can become a lot more difficult to find things just because of the sheer number of things that you already have in your data model. So today I'm going to go through some of the tricks that that I picked up from my experience that helps me keep my models organized so that even as I build more and more measures or calculations, the model still stays manageable for me. So here I am with my reports. Uh, there's actually nothing here in the report page itself because the focus today is going to be on the data model, which you can see a preview of it here on the right hand side. The first simple tip that I can give you is to hide your unused columns or tables tables that you won't use for visualization. So you might be in a scenario where you've made a calculation, maybe a measure, or maybe you just brought in a table for ordering or a dimension table that you're only using for calculations on the back end. If you want to keep organized or stay organized in your model and you want to, you know, keep it nice and tidy when you look at it, you can just simply hide those things. Now here in my model, for example, we have a few things here, a few tables tables few measures and a few columns. Now, for example, here we have category ID, which is just the ID of the category, which is an internal ID used for relationships. Now you might not necessarily need or want to visualize this on your reports. So instead of keeping it here in this view, you can simply just right click on it and click hide. So I will just hide those columns or items that are unused, which gives you some more real estate to show and focus on on those ones that you are actually using. The changes that you make are not permanent, like a lot of things in Power BI. So you can always simply either unhide everything, which will just unhide everything, or view hidden if you want to just see or get a view of all of those hidden, but not necessarily remove them from being hidden. So as you can see, when I click that option, it will show me all of the columns or things that are hidden, but not necessarily take them out from this view. So they're still hidden. So if I toggle the view hidden, hidden selection here, it will just hide them again from this view. Next is to create and use measure tables. Measure tables are basically empty tables that you can use to organize your measures so that you can group them into one place. Since measures by default don't have a row context, they don't necessarily need to live in any table. So this gives you the freedom to kind of move them to a measure table without having any kind of severe or any implication at all into how those measures work. So I did cover measures or measure tables a long time ago, and they're actually pretty simple concepts. So all you need to do is to click enter data. So it will just create us an empty table. I'm just going to name this one calculations because this is the typical name that I give for my measure table. If you hit load, you'll notice that it will add a new table here on the right hand side. And from here, you can drag in all of the measures that you have. So we have a few measures here scattered across our table. So we're just going to go to the model view. We're just going to go and find all of those measures and just move them all to our measure table just so that we can organize them. So holding control, I'm just going to select all of them then drag them into the calculations table. The last thing that you want to do is just hide that first column, which will convert this measure in or, or this table into a measures table. You'll know that with the calculator icon next to the table icon. If you have a lot more measures that you need to organize, you're not limited to just creating one measure table. I use just one measure table by default, but if I have to create more, you can simply just create more and organize your measures in those separate measure tables. And that's just another way for you to organize your measures. Another way that you can organize your measures is by uh, utilizing folders. Now, if we expand on our measure table here, for example, if you select on any of these measures or actually any of the columns that you have or 
So if you select any of the columns or measures that you have in your model, you'll notice that there is this display folder in their properties section. So if you type a value here, like for example, totals, what you will notice is that the measure that you've selected gets put into a folder that you've set up in this display folder. So from here, as you can see, now we have the gross sales in our totals. And from here, since we've created that folder, we can do the same thing on our other measures. Or you can just simply drag them. So you can drag, drag it to this total folder and the totals in this a unit sold in this totals folder. And there you go. So you've sorted them all into that folder. Now you can create multiple folders as many as you like, but you can't create a folder within a folder. So that is the kind of limitation with the display folders. So for example, here, if I select multiple measures and I create for this one, just name it others, for example, as you can see, it's just created another folder in this measures table, which lets us organize our measures a lot easier. The only thing that I found annoying with the display folders is that when I want to create new measures, if you right click on the calculations table or calculations measure table, and you have to create a new measure here, it, it doesn't give you the option to automatically create it in that folder. So the best way that I found is that if you right click on a folder, create a new measure and that way, when the measure gets created, it gets automatically organized in that display folder. It's just an easy or faster way for you to create and organize your measures accordingly. Another tip that I can give you when it comes to organizing your measures is to have a system with your naming conventions. So for example, what I do with my measures is that I prefix the measures based on what they are actually returning. So for example, we have a few measures here already. So I have the number of gross sales, the number of net sold, net, net sales, uh, which is basically units sold. And uh, maybe for the percentage ones, I've just created fake values here. But since these ones are returning percentage, maybe I'll prefix them with a percentage value at the beginning. Or maybe this one as well, net sales, I'll convert this into or just add the percentage here in that prefix at the front. And this simple naming convention does two things. First thing is that it sorts your columns or your measures in alphabetical order. And unfortunately, in the table view in your data model, there's no way for you to sort these measures. They're always so sorted alphabetically. So if you have your measures prefixed with these characters, they'll always be sorted with those characters in mind. So they're grouped in an easy to see manner. The second thing is that it makes it easy for you to use the search function because now if you want to search for any measures that are to do with, let's say, calculating percentages, all you have to do is type that character. So if you type the character there, as you can see, it just brings up all of the measures that are returning a percentage value. Now, you don't need to really follow in using characters like I do, as long as you have a system with your naming convention and that you keep that consistent across all of your different measures, it will make this finding your measures or sorting them a lot easier. And that's really it for this video. I hope some of these tips have helped you or given you some idea in how you can organize your data models in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so to do better for next time. I'll your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.